Assalamu alaikum. Let us continue with the last topic that is the power angle equation and diagram where at this point s is equal to p plus jq that is equal to jv by x e cos of delta minus j e sin of delta minus v which is equal to when we take this uh, we first write the real part in this in this uh, bracket in this bracket and then write the imaginary part so real part e cos of delta that is this minus v then minus j e sin of delta so this is the same thing now we multiply this to this you will see that this will come out to be j into, j into minus j minus j square that will be equal to plus one so e v sin of delta that will be the real value that i have written over here then this j i have taken out v e x cos of delta minus v square by x so this real part will be the real power and this reactive part will be the reactive power or imaginary part will be the reactive power so p is equal to ev by x sin of delta q will be equal to ev by x cos of delta minus v square by x so these equations equation one and two are known as the power angle equations i can write this equation as p is equal to p max sin of delta where p max is equal to e by x just to simplify it so that i don't have to write e by x again again i can write p max in instead of ev by x so these two equations are known as power angle equations we can make them uh, uh, we can now draw the curves like this this is for p is equal to v square by x sine of delta i have made an assumption that e is equal to v so in that case this will be uh, v square by x sine of delta where p max is equal to v square by x so i have drawn it for only uh, where delta is changing from 0 to 180 degree for because for 0 to 180 degrees uh, this will be in generating mode and from 180 degree to 30, uh, 360 degree or minus 180 degree to 0 it will be motoring mode since we are only dealing with the generating mode so we have to restrict our value of delta from 0 to 180 degrees <coughs> so this is the it is curve for p this is p max at delta is equal to 90 degree because at delta is equal to 90 p will be p will be equal to v square by x that's p max so this is the curve for the q you can see it from here at delta is equal to 0 this will be v square by x minus v square by x that is 0 and when delta is equal to 90 degree this will be equal to 0 this whole q will be equal to minus v square by x that is p max that is minus p max and when delta is equal to 180 degrees this will be equal to minus 1 so this will be minus v square by x minus v square by x that is minus twice p max so this is this these two curves are known as a power angle curve the above curve is known as power angle diagram or the power p delta curve p has a maximum value at p or p max at delta is equal to 90 degrees maximum power transfer from sending end to receiving end can be enhanced when the line reactant xl is equal to root 3 into r this equation has derived uh, we assume that r is equal to 0 but when the derivation is taken place when r is taken into consideration in that case maximum power uh, here maximum power comes out to be when delta is equal to 90 degrees but in this case when r is taken into consideration maximum power will be transferred only then in xl is equal to root 3 r because xl will be generally higher as compared to r real power transferred is not possible without a phase shift delta you can see it from here if delta is zero real power transfer will be zero similarly first let us see what will happen to reactive power reactive power is equal to ev cos of delta by x minus v square by x since we know that delta is very close to zero for the practical power system that means cos of delta is close to one so we can say that this will be equal to ev by x minus v square by x taken taking v by x common so we get v by x into e minus v so v by x into delta v where delta v is the change in the terminal voltage of the two bus e is the voltage of bus generator bus v is the voltage of the load bus that means this q is directly proportional to delta v if e and v are same q will be equal to zero that means reactive power transfer will not be possible without the voltage change or we can say that whenever there is a voltage in reactive power only flows then 
uh, whenever there is a phase shift only then the real power will transfer the steady state stability analysis is studied using dp by d delta from the power angle equation we'll see it but here in general this dp by d delta that is the slope of this curve is usually used to uh, this study the steady state stability analysis <laughs> for evaluation of the transient stability analysis generally equal area criteria study of single equation and non-linear differential equations are considered so here we are using the equal area criteria swing equation study and non-linear uh, non different, differential equations are then studied for equal uh, for the equation for equation of dynamic stability only linearized differential equation are studied so we'll be using usually these two we're not going to discuss this in this uh, class so we'll see that what will happen now let us discuss the swing equation how the swing equation is derived before going into that well, we should first know how are different <coughs> things related to each other that is mechanical power me mechanical torque electrical torque this uh, speed of the rotor and electrical power we know that for a generator the input is the mechanical power and output is the electrical power and for motor the input is the electrical power output is the mechanical power we have i have actually forgot to draw uh, to draw a line which shows the mechanical power you should draw this like this so <clears throat> for a synchronous machine we know that it operates at synchronous speed that means its rotor is having a constant speed of omega s that is the synchronous speed and we know that by the second law of motion uh, then uh, net force will be zero net force will be zero only then any body will have zero speed or we can say that will be at rest or that can be having any constant speed and for rotation and in case of a rotation when there is a net torque is see when the net torque is zero that is applied to a rotary body in that case uh, the speed of the uh, body will be <coughs> zero or it will be rotating at a constant speed since this is rotating at a constant speed that means that torque applying to this generator will be zero we know that this rotates by virtue of the mechanical power because mechanical power <coughs> or mechanical torque is responsible for turning it in any direction or we can say the mechanical torque or the omega s will be in the same direction now <coughs> there must be one more torque that should counter this mechanical torque to make this torque net torque equal to zero so that this uh, this rotates at the constant synchronous speed so the the second torque is the electrical torque which will oppose to this mechanical torque so that this speed remains constant so the relation of mechanical torque electrical torque and speed for the generator is like this because mechanical torque is responsible for the speed and electrical torque will oppose to this mechanical torque or we can say electrical torque is opposing to the speed if electrical torque is more as compared to the elect this mechanical torque the speed will decrease or if mechanical torque is more as the electrical torque the speed will increase when mechanical torque and electrical torque are same speed will remain the constant similarly for the motor we know that motor runs by virtue of the electrical power <coughs> that means electrical torque is responsible for turning it in any direction that is why electrical torque and omega s are in the same direction and mechanical torque has to oppose it to make it uh, run at the same synchronous speed so this is the relation of electrical mechanical torque and the omega s for motor <coughs> now one more important thing i will uh, I would like request you to be uh, to know that this is the model of the synchronous uh, machine. We know that usually we uh, keep it, we write it like this: EF, which is which is behind the synchronous reaction. By synchronous reactants, the summation of armature uh, armature reaction reactants and leakage reactants. I have br uh, broke them down and write it like this. So XS is equal to XAR plus XL, that is the synchronous reactance. So this phase diagram is important. First, we know that this is, I'll start from here. That is, this is FR. FR is the 
fr is the rotor field that is the field at the rotor and when this happens it will it will induce a voltage of ef in the stator that will be uh, that will be behind this fr by 90 degrees so this is all the knowledge of your synchronous machine please if you don't understand this go to your notes of the synchronous machine you will uh, you will understand it more so this is fr ef will be uh, lagging to this fr by 90 degrees because you will see that uh, this voltage will be induced voltage will be equal to nd fiber dt if fr is or we can see voltage and this flux will be uh, having the phase difference of 90 degrees so if, if this is fr this will be ef so this has been derived from the that induced voltage e, e is equal to nd fiber dt phi that is the flux that is linking to the stator will be in phase this fr so i have only written the fr over here phi r will be in phase with this phi r that is the flux produced by the rotor this is mmf so this is ef now let us say it draws a current there is a load and it draws a current ia and that ia is having an angle of psi over here that is ef and i has an angle of psi i haven't written over there i just i am mentioning it please write it in your notes that the angle between ef and i will be psi so when this i is uh, flowing through the circuit it results in the mmf of fs that is the stator mmf because this current will flow through the stator so then there will be now the resultant fsr that is the resultant mmf of the stator that will be the summation of this fr and fs i have made the resultant like this so by parallelogram law of parallelogram this will be the resultant of the fr and fs so this angle the angle between fr and fsr will be the delta r so please try to remember this and one more important thing is that this fr will be ahead of this fsr in case of generator and in case of rotor this fs fr will be lagging to this fsr by same delta because in case of generator this ia will have this direction you can see this direction opposite to this ia because ia will be having a ia will have been going in this circuit not coming out of this circuit so ia i can place it over here like this then the resultant will be because ia and fs will be in the same direction that of ia and then the result will be like this fsr and the fsr will be ahead of this fr by same delta r so in general we can say that fsr is ahead of sorry fr is ahead of fsr in case of generator and behind fsr in case of motor this is also important to remember now <clears throat> this also will generate a voltage that is er which will be lagging to this fsr by 90 degrees that is known as er you can see it here the angle is 90 degrees so the angle between these two will be same as angle between ef and er because they are lagging to this it is lagging to this by 90 degree, it is lagging to this by 90 degree and this fsr is lagging to this by delta r this will also lag to this er by delta r now this is the, we should have got actual voltage ef at the terminal but we are not getting it we are getting uh, some other voltage that is er that means this voltage will there will be a voltage drop at this value gia xer this voltage drop this is known as armature reaction voltage drop <clears throat> so it will be like this you can see it here it will be uh, uh, gia xer so this will be voltage available at this point er now vt will be simply v er minus gia xl that is er minus gia xl you can see that is like this so this voltage drop is because of the leakage reactance so the the angle between ef and vt we are usually taken to be equal to delta if we neglect this xl you will see that delta r sorry this delta and this delta r will be coincide or we can see er and vt will coincide that means this delta r will be then the angle between ef and vt if xl is very small or if it is neglected so this is very important <clears throat> this is very important to consider that delta r 
will be same as this delta r if xl is not taken into consideration here we are already neglected x, uh, this resistance of the machine so what i mean to say is that for small value of this xl delta is equal to delta r so we can see that this delta r is same as that of the delta which is between this vf and this vt so that's why i have drawn this uh, piece of diagram so that you will understand the relation of this delta r and delta so for the time being we can uh, we'll assume that this delta r and this delta are same assuming that is excellent r is zero and why i'm telling you this because let us say if fr is increasing and this delta r is increased same will happen to this that means this delta will also increase this will go ahead to this and this will increase or if this or this uh, or, or if this goes uh, the delta between these two will decrease or the speed because usually they both of them are uh, in steady state both of them are running at the uh, synchronous speed if the speed of this reduces and the speed of this is same as the synchronous speed you will see that the delta r reduces same will happen to this this delta r will reduce they will have the direct effect of this delta with respect to this delta r so i draw this phase diagram so that you will keep in mind that this two things that's this fr is ahead of this fsr in case of generator and this fr is behind this fsr in case of motor and also if the delta r decreases here this delta also decreases here in the same proportion if delta r increases here this also increases here in the same proportion so you need to keep these two things in the mind that is actually the purpose of drawing this uh, phase diagram now the differential equation governing the rotor dynamics can be written as you can assume it like this by we know that for a force net force that will be equal to this m del square x by del t square here since the motion is in rotation so we have this uh, net torque that is ta will be equal to tm minus t j del square del, uh, theta m by del t square this is the mechanical angle in steady state definitely this tm minus t will be equal to zero this will also be that acceleration will be zero that is accelerating torque will be zero and the speed of the synchronous machine will be synchronous speed it will run at a synchronous speed but sometimes in the transient you will see that they will there will be some imbalance and you will see that what imbalance happen and this ta this accelerating torque is equal to tm minus t that is the generator why is this why not t minus tm it is because the speed of the rotor is in the direction of the mechanical torque which we have already discussed you can see it from here the speed of the rotor because speed is in this direction and it is by virtue of the mechanical torque so we can say <clears throat> the speed of the rotor is in the direction of the mechanical torque so we can see the accelerating torque it will be equal to tm minus te for the generator the electrical torque is responsible for the uh, rotation of the rotor and the positive speed is taken at and the positive acceleration will be taken as te minus tm so please take them into consideration try to understand the why i have taken like this so here theta is the mechanical angle radians tm is the mechanical torque t is the electrical torque and g is the moment of inertia of the rotor well, i will multiply omega m to the equation one that is this i'll multiply whole equation by omega m or omega m the synchronous angular speed or synchronous speed is always in angular speed of the rotor but in mechanical radians per second because we have both mechanical uh, degrees and we have electrical degrees we always talk about electrically we need to convert them into electrical degrees so multi multiplying this we'll get ta omega m tm omega m minus te omega m is equal to j omega m del square theta m by del t square this t omega m is equal to pa that's accelerating power ta omega m will be equal to pm that is mechanical power te omega m will be equal to p that's electrical power so we can write as pa is equal to pm minus pe that is equal to j omega m del square theta m by del t square now we know that theta e is equal to p by 2 into theta m that is the relation of mechanical angle and the electrical angle and theta m will be equal to 2 by p into theta e so similarly omega m will be equal to 2 by p into omega e by simply differentiating them we can we get this equation 
So I'll put this equation that is this omega m in place of omega m I will write 2 by p omega p 2 by p omega e and in uh, in place of theta m I will write 2 by p theta e. So the equation becomes like this p a is equal to p m minus p g 2 by p omega e del square uh, by del t square into 2 by p into theta e. So this comes out to be when we take this j 2 by p 2 by p this is 2 by p square and then this omega e to be equal to del square theta e by del t square. Let, let's call this as m that is j 2 by p whole square into omega e is equal to m that means p a is equal to m del square theta e by del t square is an important result. So <clears throat> the kinetic energy in the rotor is given as 1 by 2 j omega m square which is equal to 1 by 2 because omega m is equal to 2 by p omega e that is 1 by 2 j 2 by p omega whole square that will be equal to 1 by 2 j 2 by p whole square into omega e into omega e. I have written it like this so that I can replace this whole term by m. So this will be comes out to be equal to 1 by 2 into m into e where m is this value. So the kinetic energy comes out to be 1 by 2 m into omega e. This is also an important result. Definitely the units will be megajoules. Now <clears throat> There are two axes. This is the rotor field. This is the uh, this rotating field. Sorry, this is FSR. That is the resultant field. Both of them are rotating, and the angle between these two I have taken now equal to delta. Earlier it was delta r. Now I will take it as delta and assume that is delta, and the delta between EF and BT is same. So this is the value of delta. And both of them are rotating at the same speed in the uh, steady state. You will see the same speed. But this is the axis. This theta e actually is the angle measured with respect to some stationary axis. So you will see that this angle will go on, continuously go on increasing as they rotate. So we we are not interested in the angle that will be increasing. We will be interested in the angle that is between these two. That means. This theta e is calculated. This theta e is calculating with respect to this reference angle. You can see as t increases, this will continuously go on increasing. So from this figure, I will try to make this as a reference. That is the FSR. I will try to make it as a reference, and then make uh, try to measure the angle of this ro rotor field with respect to this, not with respect to this. So from this figure, you can see that this theta e will be equal to delta plus this angle. This angle is omega e into t. Because you will see that the angle will be omega e into t, this angle. Because omega will be equal to radians per second. When this is multiplied by time, it comes out to be radian. That is the angle. So this angle will be omega into t. So total angle will be like this. So when we differentiate this with respect to t, this will be del theta e by del t, which is equal to del delta by del t. And this will be equal to omega e with respect to t. Again, differentiating, we will get del square theta e, it will be del square t, which is equal to del square delta by del t square. So, actually, I want to replace this theta e by this delta, that is the angle between the two rotating field, not the angle of rotating field with respect to axis. Sorry, stationary axis. Now put this equation in this, that means we have to replace this because del square theta e by del t square is equal to del, uh, del square delta by del t square. This p a is equal to p m minus p e that is equal to m del square delta by del t square. This is known as actually the same equation. But one more thing is that this m usually, the unique value of m can't be obtained as omega change continuously in transient period. Transient period, this, in transient period you can see this is uh, dependent upon the omega. This will change. So we find another constant h, which is defined as h is known as inertia constant. That is defined as kinetic energy stored in the rotor divided by rating of the machine. Definitely, its units will be megajoules per mva or seconds. So let the rating is defined as g in mva. Rating of the machine is d. So h will be equal to kinetic energy divided by g. Again, the units will be megajoules per mva or s. That is the seconds. So actually, I want to replace this m in terms of h so that to calculate this h, or usually h is given for the system or for the generator. In that case, it becomes simple as computer 
calculating this m now multiplying this g into h it will be equal to candy candy sometimes you may be asked to find out the value of this candy candy you can simply multiply g and h both are given so you can get the kinetic energy that is stored in the rotor also the kinetic energy is given by in terms of m 1 by 2 m into omega e it is given over here you can see it from here this so from equating these two gh is equal to 1 by 2 m into omega e we can find out m in terms of h m is equal to twice g divided by omega e where omega e is 2 pi f this 2 into will cancel out this m is equal to g h by pi f so <clears throat> this is the value of m and it will be the actual value of m then in per unit we simply divide by h sorry divide by this mm -hmm. in this case it will be its units will be equal to uh, this megawatt uh, this will be megawatt seconds mm. or we can say it will be equal to yes this will be megawatt seconds megawatt second square megawatt second square uh, or megajoule 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 second per radian per electrical radian the unit of this megajoule second per electrical radian the unit of will, will be <coughs> megawatt per unit second square per electrical radians so you need to please <coughs> confirm this and try to keep remember these units as well because sometimes these units will have a lot so by replacing this m with this you will see p a is equal to p m minus p e g h by pi f del square delta by delta e square it will be megawatt or P is equal to PM minus P H divided by pi F delta by delta square in terms of per unit. <coughs> so these two equations are also the same equations. Equation 8 and equation 14. This is equation 14 and this equation 8. This one. They are known as sing equations. So it is a nonlinear equation. Of second order is a non-linear second order differential equation second order is because of this non-linear is because of this p is equal to p. this should have been p max not pm this pm is different from this pm minus p max sine of delta and because of this sine delta it become non-linear and it's very sometimes it is very difficult to uh, solve this equation so because of the what i mean to say because of this is a non-linear and because of this this is second order differential equation so Let's try to do one simple numerical. The sending and receiving a voltage of a three phase transmission line at a 200 megawatt load are equal to 230 kilovolt. That means E is equal to 30 kilovolt. V is also equal to 30 kilovolt. That is line to line voltage. The per phase line impedance is 14 ohm, J14 ohm. Since it is J14 ohm, that means uh, resistance is neglected. Calculate the maximum steady state power. Calculate the maximum steady state power that can be transmitted over the line. Also, find the phase angle at which the 200 megawatt load is transferred to the receiving end. First, we'll calculate the maximum steady state power. We know that Vs in this case is given as Vr, that is equal to 230 by root 3, that is the phase voltage, <coughs> and x is equal to 30. so Pr, that is the receiving end power, will be equal to Vs into Vr by x sine of delta. <coughs> so, P max will be equal to Vs into vr by x <coughs> that is equal to 30 by root 3 ka whole square because this is 230 by root 3 this is 230 by root 3 and this will be 14 that is into 1 by 14 it comes out to be equal to 1259.5 megawatt per phase <coughs> because we are using phase value of the voltage similarly p max now p max will be for three phase will be three times this now this will be pr now it is said that find the phase angle at which 200 megawatt load is transferred as a receiving end. That means now PR is equal to 200, and this equation will be right for three phase. It will be like this. Otherwise, for per phase it will be divided by three divided by three. I have written it for three phase. That means 200 will be equal to now. It is given as 200. This 3778.5 uh, sine of delta. From this delta comes out to be 3.034. You can see that the value of delta is very small in the practical purpose here also it comes out to be 
around <coughs> three degrees so i'll stop here i will continue in the next class thank you